Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing News. And uh, look, we're obviously all in on electric vehicles. That's what we talk about every week over on Tesla Time News on our Now You Know channel. You can see us there every Tuesday as we have been for the past 363 weeks. We're no strangers to claims that batteries are gonna be better. Yeah, most people know by now that the original Tesla Roadster that they started delivering back in 2008 was built using basically conventional laptop batteries, cylindrical 18650 cells. I got one around here somewhere. There you go. Yeah, built on this, right? Um, it's a lithium ion battery that was designed to work in a laptop. And although there's been some chemistry changes, and you could argue that Tesla's new 4680 battery cell has a bunch of new innovations in it, like the dry electrode technology and the tabless form factor, there honestly haven't been any breakthroughs in battery technology since Tesla started. And so it's exciting to think about what could happen if we actually did have a breakthrough. And believe me, there are a lot of smart people and companies working on this as we speak. Now, do I believe that there will be huge advancements in the energy density, the safety, the speed of charge in batteries of the future? Most definitely. But when will that happen, that we actually have an economically feasible and scalable new battery technology? Because if it takes too long for that battery technology to arrive, then a lot of companies that have been banking on this will fail. Let's be clear. There are a bunch of companies, I would say most big auto companies, that didn't get into the electric vehicle game when they should have, because they were basically waiting for better battery technology. Tesla jumped right in and used what was available, and then iterated off of that and forced many other auto companies to do the same. So what have big automakers been doing? Companies like BMW have been investing in battery startups like QuantumScape, hoping for that big breakthrough that's going to lower the price of the battery for them. Last week, we heard from GM that they are leading the Series B round in a company called Mitra Chem, a battery startup headquartered in Mountain View, California. Now, we don't know how much of this $60 million Series B round is funded by General Motors. We just know that they led the round. So my guess is 20 to $30 million from GM. Mitrichem is developing iron-based cathode active materials, or CAM, including lithium manganese iron phosphate, or LMFP cells. This is in addition to lithium iron phosphate, or LFP cells, that are already widely used in the EV battery industry and something that Mitrichem already specializes in. So GM's vice president of technology acceleration and commercialization, like, why do they have so many VPs? Uh, Gil Golan, he explained, this is a strategic investment that will further help reinforce GM's efforts in EV batteries, accelerate our work on affordable battery chemistries like LMFP, and support our efforts to build a U.S.-focused battery supply chain. GM is accelerating larger investments in critical subdomains of battery technology like cell chemistry, components, and advanced cell production processes. Mitrichem's labs, methods, and talent will fit well with our own R&D team's work. I don't think they have much of their own <laughs> R&D team. Okay, so what sets Mitrichem apart from other battery startups? Well, they claim that they're using simulations and physics-informed machine learning models to accelerate formulation development and to reduce lab to production battery timelines by over 90%. So basically, they claim they have computers that solve all of the kind of laborious testing that you'd normally have to do by hand. The startup's co-founder and CEO, Vivas Kumar, says GM's investment in Mitrichem will not only help us develop affordable battery chemistries for use in GM vehicles, but will also fuel our mission to develop, deploy, and commercialize U.S.-made iron-based cathode materials that can power EVs, grid-scaled electrified energy storage, and beyond. So if Mitra Chem can actually help GM develop a better battery chemistry quicker, that would be great. My question is, how much of this is hype and how much of this is true? So if Mitrichem can actually get to a lithium metal halide or LMX battery, which would allow for solid state cells, and if those cells had a much higher energy density, lower cost, and faster charge times, and if they could get this to actual feasibility and mass production in, let's say, three years, then I'd say GM has a shot. But... If this goes the way I think it's going to go, and if it takes them longer, say seven years or more. If they can do it at all. Right. Or if the results aren't mind-blowing, then I think GM is lost. And this is because they're not operating in a vacuum. Right. We have Tesla, QuantumScape, many other companies, including the big ones like Cattle and LG Energy Solutions and BYD and Panasonic. They have really talented people who are all focused on this problem right now. Yeah. And so this leads to our next story about Ford and SK On. So up in Beckenor, Quebec, Canada, there is a region known as Quebec's Battery Alley. 
Yeah, and this is because a number of mines like Namaska Lithium Mine and Nuvamond Graphite Mine, along with companies that process battery materials like Posco Chemical, are building facilities in the region. And the Canadian and provincial governments have also pledged support for a battery manufacturing plant and innovation center in saint jerome In fact, GM partnered with Posco Chemical last year to build a cathode manufacturing plant in Beckenor, which should be producing cathode materials starting in 2025. Now, Ford has partnered with SK On and cathode specialist company EcoPro BM to invest 1.2 billion Canadian to build a cathode manufacturing facility that will supply Ford's future EVs. Production is planned to start in the first half of 2026 and could reach 45,000 tons of cathode active material, or CAM, per year. So this will be NCM, or nickel cobalt manganese cathode, using EcoPro's CSG, or core shell gradient technology. This 280,000 square meter, more than 3 million square feet site, will create 345 new jobs. So cathode material is currently very hard to come by in North America. And why is it important to have a supply of cathode material in North America? That's right. Give yourself a gold star if you said the IRA or the Inflation Reduction Act. That piece of partisan legislation. By the way, did you know that not one Republican voted for it? I'm just saying it's fact. It's not politics. It's that is responsible for bringing plants like these to North America instead of overseas. Because when you put materials from an approved country like Canada in an EV battery, The EV then may qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit, and that's a chunk of change. That amount will affect a buyer's EV choice. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, head on over to our Patreon bonus stories this week over and Now You Know, where we talk about how price can affect sales of EVs. Now, I'll bet that when you heard earlier that we said that Ford would be working on a battery with cobalt in it, you got a little queasy. Yeah, and that's because you're probably thinking about this. Cobalt mining in places like the Congo with child labor. Cobalt itself is not the bad part. In fact, it's great for making energy-dense batteries. It's all about how and where you mine it. It turns out Canada has cobalt, and there are cobalt mines ramping up in Canada as we speak. And of course, Canadian mines don't use children. There is also plenty of nickel up there, and yes, there's lithium and graphite for the anode as well. Turns out Canada has a lot of the materials you need to make EV batteries, so it's no surprise that GM and Ford and other OEMs are setting up battery plants there. And here's what ties the GM Mitrochem story together with the Ford SK On story. Both of these big automakers have sat on the sidelines for so long poo-pooing EVs, and now they are both rushing to try and catch up. Will they be able to get their hands on enough battery materials cheap enough to make enough EVs to keep up with Tesla, or will they fall by the wayside? Is 2025 and 2026 fast enough to get these plants up in Beckenor up and running? And let me leave you with this. Will it matter at all if GM and Ford's cars aren't autonomous? Mm. And I think that's the big piece a lot of people miss. That's why we're talking about it here on Disruptive Investing. You might think that the whole disruption part is the EV part, and that is disruptive. But we're adding more factors to this technology. It's kind of like when automobiles started, right? Automobiles took a new technology, a gas engine, and they put it into a car and they made this whole new technology. But we're now putting electric motors into a car along with autonomy. It's just the autonomy part hasn't fully been realized yet, right? And so it took us long enough to realize how good electric was. It's taking us even longer, I think, to realize what autonomous is. Mm. And I feel like that's where most people are missing it. If you watch to the end of this episode, congratulations. That's the whole point here. We're not talking about who's going to make it to making EVs. We're talking about who's going to make it to making EVs with autonomy in it. Mm. And of course, you know the answer to that. It's Tesla. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Disruptive Investing News. We try and come up with this episode every week. In fact, I think as soon as we started it, we haven't missed a week. And I, and we're pretty good if you if you know anything about Tesla Time News. We've done that for 363 weeks in a row. Um, so consider subscribing. You're never going to miss out on content. Um, we also have interviews. We just interviewed uh, the CEO of Intramotive. Yep. Um, and we should be coming out with a bunch more interviews and and, uh, and topics coming up uh, in the all, future. All the time. And I mean, the thing is, like, you probably never heard of Intramotive before you heard about it here because we're, I think, one of the first on the Internet to interview this company, which is kind of crazy if you think about it a company that's making giant electric trains and you never heard about it before and we hope that we bring you a little bit more than some fluffy news article that says like we asked three questions to the ceo and hey that's what they said right um we hope that you know by an interview you get to see what this person is actually like yeah. because 
at the end of the day, it, it generally comes down to who, not how, when we're talking about companies and, and their successes or failures. Really good point. So yeah, consider subscribing, hit the like button. That would help us out a lot. And if you want to join us on our Patreon Investor Club, um, we have bonus stories this week, which you can check out. If you head over to patreon.com slash now you know, join at the $10 level, you'll join our Slack, you'll join our Investor Club, you'll get access to all of our bonus stories that we do for Investor Club, along with live streams where you get to speak to some of these CEOs. Exactly. Um, so I hope we've given you enough to think about. Uh, we'll see you next time on Disruptive Investing.